This is bone broth. Now it's not traditional bone broth. There's no animal bones in it. So I know it's kind of an oxymoron and you're probably thinking, well, if there's no bone in it, you can't be calling it bone broth. But my point was to see if I can make something that was similar nutritionally and in taste. So to that aspect, yes, this is a bone broth. If you don't know, bone broth is essentially made by simmering bones along with other aromatics and vegetables to make a drinkable, sippable broth. And that's the thing that really differentiates it from just being a traditional stock. Now, I've had plenty of doctors and nutritionists and even like friends who have said, when you're sick, you gotta drink bone broth. It's like the miracle cure. There's a ton of like information about it. That's kind of pseudoscience, kind of science. No one's really for sure yet, but can we make something that's 100% plant-based that has almost all of the same nutritional values to it? But a thing with most traditional bone broths is the majority of the nutrition actually comes from the vegetables that are added. Let's take one of the most popular ones, Kettle and Fire. It has 40 calories, 330 milligrams of sodium, 110 milligrams of potassium, and 10 grams of protein. But along with those animal bones, it's also simmered with onions, carrots, celery, parsley, apple cider vinegar, sea salt, black pepper, bay leaves, thyme, and rosemary. One article I found on Healthline talks about how it's rich in calcium, magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus. And along with glucosamine, which everybody talks about how great it is for your joint health. Now the bone marrow on its own only provides a few vitamins, and that's vitamin A, K2, zinc, iron, boron, magnesium, psyllium, and omega-3 and 6 fatty acids, along with collagen. But I want to see, can I put together all of those things? I mean, there is no plant-based collagen version. There's amino acids that will help produce your own collagen, which Actually, that's what a lot of science believes that taking animal-based collagen just essentially does. It's just your body's absorbing those amino acids and we can get all of those amino acids from other places. So again, let's start putting this together because all of that nutrition comes from plants anyways and any of that extra nutrition we can actually get from other plants. So let's build our own. So first, let's wash the veggies. We're just gonna give everything a quick rinse. We're not gonna remove any skins or leaves or anything like that, because everything's going in here. Now we're gonna use the same veggies as kettle and fire, the onions, carrots, celery, parsley, bay leaves, thyme, and rosemary. Now, before we add our water and the rest of the seasonings, I also wanted to add mushrooms. They're packed with nutrition and flavor. I mean, come on, they're good but they're good for bone health, cognitive function, I mean, and just loads of other nutritious properties. So I'm gonna add just this grocery store blend that has some like oyster mushrooms, maybe some like baby bella and shiitake mushrooms. I think that's gonna be pretty good for the flavor uh, and, um, and nutrition. Now I'm gonna keep going with the same kettle and fire recipe where I'm just gonna add some apple cider vinegar, sea salt, which I'm just basing on portion size here, and some black pepper, which, you know, black pepper has a ton of health benefits on its own. Own. Now I'm going to cover this with about 10 cups of water, turn the heat on the high, and bring this up to a simmer. Once we got it heated, which I, mine got up to a boil because my stove is atomic, we're just going to close the lid and let that simmer for at least an hour, up to a few hours, which is plenty of time for today's sponsor. Be smart, don't start, put it out before it puts you out. Those are all phrases that we've heard a hundred times before, yet we continue to do bad habits. Now I had a really bad habit that I had to quit, otherwise Monica and I wouldn't be together today. And I recently had another bad habit that I needed to quit and I did with the help of today's sponsor, Fume. Fume is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from bad habits that consume far too many of us. First, Fume is not a vape. It's a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habits for a positive one. It uses cores infused with plants like cinnamon and peppermint for delicious natural flavor. And the new version two model is tactile and snappy. When you're breaking up with a bad habit, one thing that you're gonna love is something that keeps your hands occupied. It has an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap and your fingers will always have something to do. I mean, I love this thing. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who've successfully switched when other solutions just didn't work. So gang, head to trifume.com slash saustache and use code saustache to get 10% off your journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version two fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfum.com slash saustache and use code SAUSTASH will get you 10% off your journey pack today. So Fume, thanks for sponsoring today's video and providing such a useful tool to help people break up with bad habits. And we're back. That wasn't that long. Now I let it simmer for about four hours actually. Uh, I kicked the heat up right at the end just to kind of finish it off and then we're going to let it kind of just cool down for a bit and as we're doing that we're going to remove these veggies. Now we don't need to remove everything because we're going to be straining this later but we're going to try to get most of it out. Now once we got this mostly devoid of veggies we're going 
to take care of that collagen, those amino acids I talked about. We're gonna use about a third of a block of silk and tofu while burning the heck out of myself because I, I dropped it in too high. Now, you can also use some liquid aminos. This is really gonna up the, the amino acid profiles. This is just a, pretty much 100% amino acids right here. We're also gonna add a little bit of Marmite. Now, there's some health benefits to the yeast extract, including vitamin B12 and the antioxidant benfotiamine, which is associated for improved survival rates following a heart attack. It's pretty cool. Now at this point, I'm just gonna break up the tofu and whisk pretty heavy. I'm just trying to create a, a thickened sauce using that tofu. Now the tofu is gonna be kind of small and have little bits, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Now at this point, you can give it a taste and just adjust if you wanna add any more seasonings, add any more vinegar, whatever you would like. Uh, but for me, this was pretty good. The only thing that I did wanna add that I actually forgot was some nutritional yeast. Now this is fortified nutritional yeast, so it's gonna be loaded with even more vitamins. Now I'm gonna put the entire nutrition lists and what I believe all the values are right here. Here. Now we just need to filter it. Now it's going to get a few filters here. So we're just going to run through this first one. And then I'm going to toss this, the filter mixture into a blender to kind of blend it up a little bit smoother. Uh, that's also going to whip up some of the proteins and, and cook some of that to the top. Uh, and then we're going to filter it again, this time through like a coffee filter, an even finer filter. That should be your final broth right there. And now at this point, this is looking pretty good. So it makes about 10 servings and it's going to last in your refrigerator for about a week or two, but you can freeze it for three months or more. Now let's see what, what Monica has to say about it. Mm. Oh, this is a really good broth. <laughs> yeah, it definitely doesn't taste like vegetarian broth. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, does it taste like a beef broth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's what I, yeah. It definitely tastes like a beef, like bone, like what I would think like a real pho is made in, you know? Yeah. So it, what about like the mouthfeel? Does it feel thick? Does it feel thin? Is it thicker than like a vegetable broth? Any different? It just tastes like a really nice smooth broth and, um, it's, you know, a little bit like slightly like smoother and uh, thicker, slightly than a vegetable broth. Okay. I mean, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're going for. There's not as much protein in this as there is in like a bone broth, like the fire and kettle one, but we're close. But I mean, everything else I feel like has or should have close to that same taste. Nutritionally, we are pretty much at about the same thing. Yeah, I love it. So, I mean, this is, it can be used just as like a sipper like this when you don't feel good, something like that. But I mean, really the rest of it that we're saving, I'm gonna make some soup later this week, probably like a ramen. I mean, all I have to do is just simmer up some ginger and garlic, toss this over top and maybe a little miso or something and boom, I mean, you have yourself some ramen. All in all, this is delicious and I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. It's a good, comfort food. I've been talking about that a lot lately because I'm recovering from some things. And this is kind of like just what the body needs, I think. I, I, I don't know about you. Let me know your thoughts on this one. I'm, I'm really curious. I know it's not bone broth, but I'm just going to call it a plant-based bone broth because it has, the goal of it was to reach all of that same stuff nutritionally. And I, and I believe I got there. Mm -hmm.